What's going on everybody? Tim here, the Kentucky Board Gamer, and I've got this uh, great game that I'm privileged to be able to review, and it is called Into the Black, a game of space piracy, and it is designed by James Campbell. It's for one to four players takes about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, somewhere in there, and it's for 13 and up. Now, as you can hear, it's got some good bits in it. Um, who doesn't like tokens and all that stuff? I, I do, anyway. Um, now, the basis of this game is that you are a pirate, a space pirate, and you're trying to... Uh, sneak aboard a Federation ship and make out with either the ship or as much loot as possible and kill the entire crew you know the the, the basis is to do your objective possibly kill off the entire crew uh, which is ultimately your goal and you know escape alive with their ship now there are a few things that are really neat about this. For one, it's a modular game, so the the ship layout is never the same. I mean, I, I suppose you could try to get it close to the same, but it will essentially never be the same. Um, you start with your your airlock tile, and there are rooms and corridors, and the corridors look like that, and they say corridor on the back and some of them have doors on them so we're gonna say these go like this now uh, you have your pieces and I know I'm all over the place with this one <laughs> bear with me it's it's just an exciting game so I can't help that you have your pieces here and your pieces you have your meeples which are for your crew members there's red white blue and yellow and you'll pick you know which ones are yours these I place on my cards when I play single player or when I play two player uh, yeah two player because we choose two characters now, this way I know which character is which and there's uh, one for each of them too and then you have the Federation guys, the bad guys, your enemy essentially. And these guys you'll find throughout the ship in different rooms uh, and things like that. Now there are obviously dice. Who doesn't love dice? And there are little tokens, little cubes for when you're searching. Now I'd like to point out too that I, it was something that I did not point out yet. This is a preview copy of one of the very first uh, iterations of the game. And because it is such, the game has gone through a couple tweaks and changes. Now, my review is of the original version. And the, the tweaks and changes are different things like uh, you can come into enemy in the corridor. You'll run into some of them randomly. Uh, the rooms, there's... Um, the way the combat system is is a little bit different so there's there's various little things that change so anyway on your turn you have two actions essentially um, you can move uh, you can search you can attack you know there's yeah you know, all, all those little things and on here these would be your character cards now on each character card it has its stats just like it should and they also have a ranking number here down at the bottom and what that is for is the uh, player what do you call it um, order turn order so the higher the rank they go before the lower rank so uh, say a 10 a 5 and a 2 it doesn't matter you know which way you got them a 10 would go first, then a 5, then a 2. Uh, now we'll say that that was a bad example because I only used 3, but we'll say it's 10, 7, 5, 2. 
uh, you're not going to have 10, 5, 2, 7. It's not going to go in that order. It'll go highest to lowest. So it'll go 10, 7, 5, 2. So that would be the turn order, no matter what, for your characters. Now, the cool thing about your characters is they can collect loot. Um, those, there's a nice big stack of cards here, which have all kinds of loot in it. I've not gone through every one of them, and I've played the game quite a bit. Uh, there's weapons, there's wearable things, uh, like armor, stuff like that. There's uh, special weapons or special items. There's uh, explosive charges, so you can detonate to get out of a door, or, uh, you know, like an airlock locks on you, things like that. Um, there is also just all kinds of uh, different objects, uh, oxygen tank, food rations, stim packs, uh, let's see, portable replicator, floor plans, things like that, which could be collectible items depending on your objective, your personal objective. And speaking of objectives, you have quite a few of them. And these would go out to each player, one to each player at the beginning of the turn, with the rest going to the box. Now, there are different ones in here. There's uh, a couple trader objectives, and you don't have to play with those. You can play fully co-op if you'd like. And although the game is co-op, it also has a sense of um, winning for yourself in that some of these objectives are you know they're not going to be for everybody they're going to be for you so like this one here personal objective hunger it says you are just so hungry all right uh, and it goes on and says you don't really care about taking over some dinghy ship so much as you just want to find a good meal being a space pirate's you know pretty hard work you don't always have food uh, it says Discover the galley and have at least one food ration loot card in hand at the end of the game. So if you do that, by the end of the game, you win. Um, now that's just your personal objective. Maybe some other person didn't get their personal objective. That would put you at a higher winning tier than them. But it doesn't necessarily mean anybody loses so long as you, you know, take over the ship. There are event cards. Event cards come in when you find rooms. And these can be anything from find an enemy defender, there's no event, self-destruct activated, blast door, force field activated, emergency lockdown, here's a good one. The door slams shut, this room is under an emergency lockdown. For any character to exit this room, they must make two consecutive search rolls. Okay, or you can use, I believe it's the uh, blast uh, explosives, that's it. So there's plenty of events too, which, now this is, like I said, this is a preview copy and one of the first. So there might be a couple more cards added, give or take, I'm not sure. So keep that in mind. Now the rooms, as I was showing you just a second ago, these, when you place them down, they go like this, right next to a door. Okay, and when it's there, say, uh, say the red guy here, he wants to go in, and he just so happens to be right here. So he wants to move in. He moves. You flip the tile. Nobody sees it when you first place it. You flip the tile, and that's what's in there. Now, in this particular one, there's an event. So you would draw your event card, which we'll take from right here. Enemy Defender. Now, the enemy defenders, their, their health and hit points and all that are on the cards themselves. This one has two actions, two health, and it has a ranking of one. Um, and these are defender bots, by the way. I don't know if that will change in the final game, or if it will still be bots. But anyway, you would go on and you would fight and hopefully win. And you would have him, you know, as one of your trophies, so to speak. So now, we also have these command center cards. These command center cards are in rooms. And they're kind of stacked so that you'll come into them at certain points, but they're still random. You put one in the top half, two in the bottom half, and you shuffle the top, shuffle the top half, shuffle the bottom half, and then put the stacks on together. So it, it is random. Now the command centers, they essentially do nothing. 
at least you know in, in my copy the third one you find though is actually going to be replaced with the bridge now the bridge has the ship's captain it has first officer security officer and navigator and they all have their own hit points health and actions and rankings and all that thing so they're they're in the bridge these are the guys you were out to get okay because the rest of the crew is coming to get you they're trying to find you not necessarily directly but as they're searching the ship or wandering through the random encounters okay so you have the bridge now when you beat all of them you've taken over the ship but have you done your objective if you haven't there's no necessarily big deal um, you are just knocked down a tier as far as winning as a cooperative though you have won so it, that's up to you as far as the objectives go that's I like that now there's also a morale track and an apprehension track okay the morale track is essentially that it's it's for your morale and this also sets the difficulty because as your morale drops you know your your guys are going to be like what's the point we're done you know that kind of thing um, and then you have the ap apprehension track which this is how much time you have before you get apprehended so this is kind of like your timer um, essentially it is your timer and the way it works is after certain actions certain events certain things the counter will move okay at the end of every event turn whatever it'll move when you get to 24 if you have not taken over the ship by that point game over they the federation guys have come and they have uh, caught you and you are now under their law and arrested so you you lose now on top of that uh one last thing here is the rule book now as you see here the rule book looks really nice it's this is just a prototype and it's still great this one in particular has a few things missing from you know the current rules I have taken a look at all the current rules and I will say that it has definitely upped its game uh, no pun intended the game is a lot better from reading the new rules and seeing how things play out and how they work it's it's definitely better than what I have but I loved what I had to begin with there were some things that were kinda uh, what would be the word kinda droll I guess they were they were just like eh, that could be better but you know I, I like it well now after reading the rules and seeing all the components that are gonna be in the final version I really like it I mean I, I, I want the game that much more which was a great thing on James's part because you know a lot of times you get the review copy and if they're too polished you don't want to or need to buy the final version not necessarily don't want to um, you know you always want to help support Kickstarters and developers and companies and publishers and all that and designers you know that's that's not the question here the question is though when you get a fully finished version sometimes you don't need to buy the final version um, because you know you're you're kind of trading the copy for the review such as this well in James's case here he did a great thing as far as I'm concerned and it may not have been on purpose couldn't tell you but I, I like it uh, I got the one of the very first and it has drawn me to essentially want to buy the final and what I mean is because it's nowhere near the quality of the final uh, there's more components in the final the rules are different in the final it's well they're added to anyway um, that was a, a really cool thing that I like uh, it helps to make people like me want to support even more because I I've had a taste I want the full game now so keep that in mind if you're watching this and you're a developer or a publisher or anything like that this was a great way to go um, now anyway back to the rule book here it shows layouts of how you set the game up which is great it is perfectly divided and very clear as to what is where and what each thing does and I mean it's it goes into it gradually so that you can learn it all at once 
without being overwhelmed. There are the event tokens that are in the back of the book here, so it shows you all of those. And the character boards right here, which it shows you and tells you what all that's for. Now, as far as this game goes, my honest opinion, should you buy this game? Uh, if you like modular games, uh, a little bit random uh, with the dice and you know things like that, Definitely. Uh, you can also, uh, one thing I didn't even mention is you, you your loot, you equip it to your guy, so he'll carry it with you, or female, or whatever. They'll carry it with you. Um, some of the things you keep in your hand, some you put on your character. Now, seeing the final version, should you buy that as opposed to my first impression? Yes. The final version is two to three times better than this. And I mean that as a compliment. I don't mean to put this down. I still love this. If I end up not being able to get the final version, I am perfectly content with this. This is a great game the way it is. Now, that all being said, there's, there's really not much more I can get into with it. It's, uh, like I said, it's modular. You have your characters, you have tons of loot, you have plenty of events, there's, there's actually a lot of them. Rooms and corridors and ships and enemies and dice rolling and meeples. I mean, who doesn't want meeples? Who, I mean, look, you get them all, there's all kinds of them. Um, but there's one suggestion that I'd like to personally make right now to James, the designer of this game. And that is to possibly come up with a way to do scenarios or campaigns. Pre-built maps, uh, different objectives in that sense, and maybe character progression. I can see that uh, blowing up with this game. It, it would be great. It's, I mean, you have your characters and they have their stats. And there's nothing wrong with the stats. The stats work great. However, it would be so cool to be able to take a uh, we'll say a ship's mate and you know upgrade their character and get them to progress to where they eventually become a captain or they are higher than a captain and you know a captain could get demoted or you know something like that I know that's going way into it but I, I feel like this would just be mind-blowingly awesome should there be some sort of campaign uh, scenarios, things like that, uh, you know, uh, weapon progression, character progression, all sorts of stuff. But anyway, as far as buy the game, me personally, I'm definitely going to uh, try to get this game. This is hands down one of my favorites that I have right now and that I've had for weeks now, uh, even months I believe. And I just, I can't get enough of it. I don't get it to the table as much as I'd like. But being that it's one player, I can. So, it's great. Anyway, guys, I'm Tim, the Kentucky Board Gamer. And make sure you check down below this video when it goes live on Kickstarter. Just uh, within now in a, a day or two, I will edit and put the link down below. So, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, take care, and I will talk to you guys later.